Harina Nagendra, thank you for talking to us today. Um, we're here at the Resilience 2017 conference. We're focusing obviously on resilience research and on social ecological systems. Now your field of interest uh, or particular one is urban right. uh, research. How would you define what is your understanding of social ecological, uh, ecological systems? In a city. Yes, indeed. So I think a city is a really great way to, I mean, to study cities Thinking of them with social ecological systems is a great way to approach this. Unfortunately, so far, people who, so ecologists don't really look at cities, hmm. unfortunately. That's changing now, though. And uh, people who look at cities think of nature as a footnote, if hmm. that. Right? So the problem is that cities need ecology to grow. We seem to think that cities can grow and tackle these problems later, or they are necessary for stress relief, or you know, but they're really re necessary for the life of the city. Mm. You, know, you can't have a city grow without clean water, clean air, food that's provided locally, other kinds of services that nature provides, and just being embedded in nature, I think, makes you think very differently. So to me, cities are very natural, social ecological systems. The ecology is so tightly coupled with the social, and the feedback loops are so integrated. Mm that you can't think of urban sustainability without thinking of them this way mm. in, as, at a system level with the ecology being such an sort of important fundamental part of the system. Mm. But that's not how we think of them. I mean, traditionally, if you look at urban literature, ecology is so peripheral to the discussion. So I think we really need, I mean, to me, this is the way to go in terms of future research on urban systems. On cities. Hmm. Now, your most recent book, Nature in a City, Bangalore in the Past, Present and the Future, mm -hmm. that looks at Bangalore and how that has changed right. from 6th century C today. Yeah. Yes. I mean, wow, that must be enormous changes. Can you tell us a little bit what, what has indeed changed? A lot has changed. What strikes me the most is, so Bangalore is an old settlement. It has megalithic stone tombs, so it's been settled for a long time. Mm. It's an unusual city because it was on a, in a semi-arid region. Hmm no trees the weather is not that hot but it's still hot in the you know in the sun and uh, it doesn't get that much rainfall no big rivers it's not near the coast so the way people settle the city as you you know the one thing i show in the book is how when people came in they actually improved the quality of the ecology from a human use perspective they built irrigation dams or tanks which we call lakes today and filled the place with water and made it much you know recharge the groundwater and made that place much more fertile in that sense. Mm. They planted trees that gave shade. So over a time, you see at least till the mid to the late 19th century, that the more people there were, the better the ecology became from a human perspective. Greener, you know, more water, more uh, fertile. Mm. And then somewhere in the 20th century, that relationship begins to break down. Okay. So piped water comes in and lakes are no longer considered sacred or life-giving. And wells and lakes are closed up, polluted and become a degraded mess. That is beginning to change now because people realize the importance of water for survival because you can't get enough pipe water. The rivers are running dry and your groundwater is running dry. So a lot of communities have got together for lake restoration now. Mm. Similarly, trees were cut down in the, I mean, close to you know, hundreds of thousands of trees across the city in the past 20, 30 years. Air pollution is rising so much now that, again, citizen groups are getting together to protest this and actually to protect the remaining trees from getting cut. So I think there's this balance between nature and the city that went out of whack somewhere mm. and now people have realized that and are really working towards this. So one thing this really tells you about cities is that you think, especially in countries like India or you know, many parts of the world where the focus is on development, you think development is economic growth and you can fix nature and its problems mm. later. But I think people are realizing the shallowness of that, that you can't really grow unless you're in balance with nature. Mm. So it, it sounds as if Bangalore is going through some sort of a positive change or, or at least acknowledgement like, that we uh, need to change our the way we are. Acknowledgement, yes. Yeah. yeah. What about from an, an, a bigger perspective within India, country? for instance? Yes. Would you say there's a similar? I think there's a lot of growing movement of communities interested in restoration across uh, the country. Hmm. So, And there are municipalities. Uh, I'd say not the big cities, but at least the small to medium cities, many of them are solid wa they're pioneers in solid waste management or water treatment and reuse or planting trees of the right kinds, greening the cities. Mm. So there's a lot we can learn from the mid-sized cities, I right. think. But there's still much to be done. So, for instance, one of the things we are looking at is the Smart Cities program in India, and that's beginning to look a bit scary from the perspective of ecology mm. because most of the funding doesn't you know, really cover issues of nature, it's all technology focused. And the stuff that does is does not really thinking about nature in the right way. So they might be planting exotic species because you should plant trees, 
or uh, doing things like riverfront beautification which is just a lot of money mm. again on you know mm. uh, construction work and right. things like that so mm. so i think there's a lot of problems with that that need to be looked at from a nature perspective okay can i go back a little bit to to sort of your work and indeed as you as a scientist mm. and we're here this is a scientific conference right. um you've been involved with resilience research mm -hmm. for quite some time mm -hmm. um looking ahead what within the res resilience research what do we still need to improve what is still lacking i think where we've gone ahead very well is in the social sciences and connecting the ecological or the environmental or the earth sciences where we're lagging really is in the humanities and as a teacher now looking at you know that part of it how do you change people's attitudes towards sustainability mm -hmm. i think a lot of uh, times when i'm teaching students they come back and say that uh, resilience or sustainability or ecology are all dismal disciplines so they're very charged up in the first year but by the time they graduate mm -hmm. they're sort of feeling that the you know the, is the earth doomed and can we okay. do anything about this so i think we need to get more accent on the positive and on actually going out there and trying to do something be more transdisciplinary make a difference and for that you need the humanities you need the art you need the music and which is why this conference to me has been great because there's so much discussion of how do you link this with the creative arts and mm. things but i really think we need to pull more humanities into the discussion mm. and perhaps the answer to my next question is obvious then um, but in, what about the science of cities what about urban research what needs to get better i think cities are changing the if so let's get back to the science then on that question there's a lot of science based questions that we don't have answers to because urbanization in the global south has a very different characteristic than urbanization mm. in the global north for obvious reasons so there are you know a few things that i've been looking at one is nature of place making because you need new commons or new communities that come together for conservation in the global south when you have you know migrants can be so it might be the 70% of the city is migrant Hmm. and it's recent migrant in 3 to 5 years now that's unprecedented how do you forge new communities and within this you have the very rich and the very poor how do they talk across to each other how do they build place making and connections hmm. that's one big un unanswered question we're looking at there are questions of basic science so all water bodies in cities are going from uh, uh, seasonal rain fed to perennial and sewage fed hmm. and that changes the ecology in fundamental ways again how do you change you know how do you deal with the ecology you have to think very differently about these epidemics urban diseases there are you know when you have livestock in cities as you do in many of these global south cities that changes the relationship between vector and host and parasite again in ways that we don't know it seems like anecdotally that the rich might be worse hit by some of these epidemics than the poor because the poor live with the livestock which actually buffers so i'm essentially what i'm trying to get at is on the science end also there's just so much that we don't know that we need to be doing in an interdisciplinary way getting the doctors into the conversation for instance so getting the hydrologist talking to the ecologist talking to the fishermen you know those kinds mm. of things more talk and more action more basically. talk and more action right. exactly yes thank you for your time